So now my last talk, I saved the best for last because the mass, as Pope John Paul pointed out to us, is, and he pointed out to us through the documents of Vatican II, that the most important thing in our lives is the mass. Sometimes I give talk to junior hires and high schoolers and they're like, oh, mass is so boring. But in fact, it's not boring at all. And let me show you why. Well, I got this sleeping bag here. I can't use it because um, I'm not doing a normal talk out in the hall. But normally, I would take the sleeping bag and um, I would then have a young girl um, get on it and then we would have a flux capacitor. Remember what flux capacitor means? It's from back to the future. So do you, Sharpay, want to go on the flux capacitor? Sure. Okay, then all you have to do is go to mass. Okay, so let's pretend like she's going to mass. She genuflex. Remember when you genuflex, get on that knee. Okay, not the splits. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, so she genuflex and then she goes to mass. And without realizing it, you and I, just like Sharpay, we are actually being taken back in time and space. Where? Woo! Let's pretend like this is the foot of the cross. That's what happens at every Mass. You and I get to go to Calvary. What happened on Calvary was Jesus shed his flesh and blood for you and for me so that our sins can be forgiven, so that we can live out the proper language of the body. Not only do we get to go back in space and time to the foot across to Jerusalem where Jesus died for us, but we are propelled at Mass woo, to where? To the future to that eternal banquet. I mean, think about how heaven is described like a banquet, like um, getting to eat and have fun with friends and family. So at every Mass, we get to go there too. All the angels and saints join us in worshiping the Father through Jesus' gift of self on the cross and the power of the Holy Spirit. It's a Trinitarian act. So remember that. Whenever you um, think about the fact that Mass is boring, just remember, oh, let me remember what's going on. Calvary and the Beatific Vision right there in time and space. It's like, as Thomas Howard says, the the veil is being pulled back, and we get to experience that. Thanks, Sharpay. Sure. All right, G.I. Joe, will you also help? Yeah, I'd be glad to help. Okay, hold on just a second. I mean, hold on just a second. I mean, okay. So, the G.I. Joe guy, since I don't have any um, teenage boys here who are willing to take a risk, then I will display it this way. Okay, so I sometimes have that sleeping bag, and what I will do is I'll get the guy to, I'll get two guys holding up the sleeping bag, and then the brave singer will be behind this veil, you might say, and he'll be singing. G.I. Joe, what do you want to sing? How about... Jingle bells. Okay, it's not Christmas. Well, it's all I know. Okay, so jingle bells it is. So, um, you might think about mass sort of like this, okay? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one. What do I mean by this? I mean that just like his singing, always was ongoing. It never stopped. It just kind of got quieter. And the quieter means that, you might say, it's when we're not at Mass. But when we're at Mass, the veil gets worn back, and then we get to know that the sacrifice on Calvary worked. I hate equating G.I. Joe and Jingle Bells with the sacrifice on Calvary, but it's an analogy, okay? So take it for what it's worth. And so that veil gets brought back in space, um, that, that veil gets brought down, and then we get to participate in that very act. And one of the things we do that I think, um, if we all knew this, it would totally transform our way of viewing the Mass. And since the Mass is so big, and the most important thing um, that we can do in our lives, then we're going to have to step outside to my front lawn and then we will, uh, I want to show you this pretty um, powerful and meaningful exercise, this demonstration about what I would hope that you would do with regard to the Mass. So wait one moment and uh, we'll be moving outside and um, I'll demonstrate this to you. 
So I told you that the mass is so great, I need to be outside to have a bigger space. So let me finish my talk by letting you know that the mass is the most powerful thing in your life. Why? Because we encounter Jesus Christ. And I want to share one thing, what I do with you, and I hope that you can translate it to things that are happening in your life. So, one of the things that um, I do is I imagine myself going to Mass and then carrying my burdens. So, for instance, this chair, and all these are true, this chair represents the fact that my mom has congested heart failure, and I never know um, how much longer she'll be around with us. This chair symbolizes the fact that I, though I love going around giving talks on Pope John Paul's Theology of the Body, I used to be a teacher for 18 years, and I miss my everyday interaction with young people. I miss that a whole lot. This chair symbolizes the fact that one of my dearest friends is struggling with her mom having cancer. And it's such a burden. And these and other chairs symbolize many things, but this last chair symbolizes the fact that my sister Claire um, had my nephew named Nikki. Nikki now is two years old, but he still can't talk and he can't walk on his own. He's already had heart surgery and trachea enlarging surgery and all sorts of things, and now they think that he might have the syndrome where he might develop cancer. And so what I do is I take all my burdens and I know that if I go to Mass, all I have to do is I have to lay my burdens down. So I throw my burdens down and I picture myself putting all of these, as well as my joys and my petitions, on the cross. On, um, and the cross is the same thing as the altar. So I put all these things on the altar. And I say, Jesus, I can't handle these anymore. But I know you can. And then, just as the bread and the wine are transformed into the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus, so these burdens, these cares, they might not be transformed in so far as they are gone out of our lives, but they are transformed and so, so are we. So I would encourage you young people to make sure that you realize that the Mass is the center of your life and to give your whole life to Jesus who will present you and me and all of the church to the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is a life-giving and love-giving event, the sacrifice on Calvary. Now remember, we started way over at my park outside, and now we're ending outside, and what happened there? Remember the flood came in that ravine. So don't, young people, don't let yourselves be swept away by the flood, by the untruths that society gives you. Instead, be holy and happy and free by living out the language of your body and ask Pope John Paul for in his intercession so that you and I might always love and live like the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit until one day we get to see Jesus face to face along with the Holy Spirit and the Father. And Mother Mary, we ask that you would intercede for us. And we pray, all glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. And uh, feel free to contact me at tobit.org. That's T-O-B-E-T -E dot org. And I would love to hear from you. Thanks. God bless you.